We're doing Prospect Corner a little bit differently. Today, we have got draft-eligible prospect Charlie Wright, defenseman from the Saskatoon Blades, here with me today to uh, answer a couple of questions about the draft, about his summer plans, uh, and about what it's like to be stuck on a bus for a billion hours at a time. That's all coming up today on Locked on Blue Jackets. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you normally the stories, the news, everything about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. But as we get closer and closer to the draft uh, today, I am bringing you something a little bit different with the prospect coverage I've been doing. We've done a ton of draft profiles with prospect experts, but I thought let's talk to... The guys that are actually getting drafted. So uh, today I've got a conversation that I had yesterday with uh, Charlie Wright. He's a defenseman. He plays for the Saskatoon Blades. And uh, he could very well be a Blue Jacket this time in uh, a couple of weeks. So uh, before we get started, I do want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked on Blue Jacket is free and available on all podcast platforms and also on YouTube. So uh, with that, out of the way, I will get right into my conversation with Charlie. So I am here today with uh, Charlie Wright. He is a draft eligible prospect uh, defenseman currently playing for the uh, Saskatoon Blades. Uh, how's it going, Charlie? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Oh, can I? Uh, well, I would say I can't complain. The bosses don't like it when I complain, but I'm uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I am uh, enjoying enjoying the week so far. Good. So uh, I thought we'd we'd just kind of start off a little bit. Uh, just kind of tell me, me and the listeners, just a little bit, a little bit about yourself. I'm Charlie Wright from Olds, Alberta. I uh, play for the Saskatoon Blades in the WHL. Uh, the draft is coming up, so I'm excited for that. And uh, I'm hoping to hoping to go to a NHL team here pretty soon. Awesome. So uh, yeah, let's let's jump right into it. Let's let's talk about hockey. When did you kind of realize that being drafted was something that was like a potential option for you? I think it was something I've always dreamed of, right? Growing up, uh, playing hockey in Canada. And um, I think just as the years went by, I saw that I kind of was taking steps above some other kids and um, towards guys older than me who were taking those same steps as well and following in their footsteps. And I thought, um, I actually have a real chance at this. And I just kept grinding away and uh, working on myself. And it brought me here today. How are you? Are you feeling going into the draft? Are you feeling good? Are you feeling nervous? A bit of both? A little bit of both, right? It's, it's like I said, it's something you dream about your whole life. It's what you work towards. So uh, definitely super excited, but also, also nervous. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I couldn't even imagine like the the feeling of being drafted. Like I get nervous for you guys. Like so I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine doing it for uh doing it for me. Um so a team a team draft you what kind of player is that team getting? Do you think like how what would you say give me your your own scouting report, I guess is is what I'm asking. I would say I'm a two-way defenseman who um, hates to get beat. I hate I hate getting beat. It's something I take pride in uh, on the defensive side. Uh, that's kind of where my game starts is on the defensive side. That's where I'm strongest. And then I'd like to say I can add some offense too, and uh, I can continue to grow that part of my game as well going forward. Is there a player that you – kind of model your game after is anyone in the NHL at the minute that you kind of look at and you're like, yeah, that's who, that's who I'd like to be, you know, five, 10 years down the line, maybe. Yeah. I always say Josh Morrissey. Uh, he's a guy that is a great skater and breaks the puck out really well. And then, like I said, can add some of that offense too and play in any situation for his team. And I'd like to think that I can do that as well. 
Yeah, I mean, you could you could do a lot worse than than uh, Josh Morrissey, I think. Um, coming up in a minute, I've got more of my conversation with Charlie about uh, things like WHL bus rides and how they suck, but also they might be a little better than you think, and uh, what his favourite a way a reader to play in is but first i've got to tell you about bet online because bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information you can find all the sports developments league reviews and news including major league baseball uh the playoffs are over for the nhl but i bet you could uh put some money on who's going to win the cup next year already over at bet online uh, your continued source for all your sportsing wagering information including live betting esports and scores and they remain the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to the website today, or you can use your mobile device. Once again, that is BetOnline.net to learn more about the trends and action, because BetOnline is where the game starts. Kind of on the on the flip side of that, like obviously it's going to be a massive summer for you coming up between the draft and then, you know, potential training camp, et cetera. Is there anything that you want to work on specifically over the summer that you think this is what I need to kind of bring my game to the next level? I've been working a ton on my shot. I think that's something that can make me more lethal for a goal, goal scoring defenseman, uh, just getting pucked through from the point as well as just my physicality and filling out that will come naturally but i'm doing the best i can to just eat as much as i can and gain some strength to help bring my game up to that next level yeah for sure it always feels really unfair to like look at draft eligible guys and be like well he's he's too small or whatever because you know you're 17 18 like you're not done you're not done growing yet so i'm always a little bit wary when people like he needs to get bigger he needs to get stronger i'm like well yeah he's gonna Almost definitely he's gonna. So uh, obviously that's kind of out of your hands, but it's it's always always a plus to know that you've maybe got another couple of years of, of growing to do. Oh, for sure. I'd say so. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about the WHL um, and kind of playing in the WHL. Was that somewhere that you decided, like, was that just where you happened to end up? Did you always want to play in the WHL or the CHL, I guess, or was NCAA an option? Like, what was your thought process towards going to, like, Major Junior? Uh, it's not something you really even think about, at least for myself, growing up until about your draft year, and you realize, oh, hey, this is this is kind of the next step. And so then you see the guys older than you that you've played with in the past or even a few years older kind of go that route. And I was, I was uh, curious about about it and um i ended up being drafted to the saskatoon blades and uh, i ended up signing with them they offered me a contract and i don't regret uh signing with them at all i've loved it ever since and uh it's a great pathway for any kid growing up to try and make it to the nhl yeah for sure i always feel the whl i think has got a fantastic level of hockey um i've been really i've really enjoyed watching the, the whl this season um but the thing, the thing for me for the WHL, and I guess the other the other leagues as well is the bus rides. Those have got to be killer. Like, how do you deal with that? How do you prep for games? Getting that right mindset when you're going from like Saskatoon to I don't know, like Everett or Vancouver or somewhere you know way out on the coast. Yeah, you definitely pack a lot of snacks. Uh, it helps that your teammates are there with you. Right. So that keeps you some company and it's not completely boring of a trip, but um, I think you kind of get used to it. Those are obviously not the day trips to Everett. You don't play on the days you travel. So th that's always nice, but um, you get some of those bus legs out, but you get kind of used to it and find ways to fall asleep and nap for sure. Yeah, something to something to get used to, uh, look forward to with the NHL, I guess, is uh, getting to getting to fly places instead of sitting on a bus for uh, many many hours. So uh, oh, yeah, yeah, speaking of sure. like road trips and stuff, um, I I love going to like different arenas. Um, we have about ten big arenas over here, so I've been to most of them, but like NHL arenas and stuff as well. What's been your favorite arena to play in apart from, you know, I guess your home arena is the best, obviously, but what's your favorite away arena to play in? 
I mean, Rogers is pretty cool in Edmonton. Um, once you're actually on the ice, it's pretty sweet. It's massive, and the facility's crazy nice. Dressing room's unbelievable. Just everything about it is obviously top tier NHL. But like at WHL rink that I really like is Red Deer too. Red Deer is kind of the same setup as Edmonton rink wise. They have that kind of big wall with all the boxes in it, and it's it's a nice place to play in as well. Cool. I I have only actually been to one WHL um, arena. I went to a playoff game for the Victoria Royals back in like 2014. Um, great. Like I really enjoyed it. Actually, really really great rink. Um, fantastic atmosphere which is why again kind of going back to how much i enjoy the whl always does make me laugh when people are like oh i only pay attention to the nhl because like whl the ohl like the ahl it's all so good and i think it's so underrated like major junior hockey so uh i am i am a big like i said big fan of the uh the whl uh coming up in a minute i've got a little bit more of my conversation with charlie uh including something that he's very passionate about off the ice uh that is coming up next on locked on blue jackets so th- this is your s- you got going into your second season with saskatoon i'm going into my fourth i just finished fourth, my third sorry season. yeah i can i can count it's fine um <laughs> <laughs> what was what's been your best memory kind of with the blades so far oh there's lots of them uh they've been absolutely fantastic um i mean signing is always a big thing that was always a special moment for my family and i and me um the bus trips as much as much as they are long and you you get those bus legs though that's a lot of memories are made on the bus hanging out with the guys so um Kind of like like what you were saying in the NHL is that they fly everywhere. I think I think sometimes you'll look back and kind of miss those bus rides. So um, I would say some of the bus rides are definitely some of the best memories. Awesome, yeah. It's yeah, like I say, there's there's something about spending eight hours tra- trapped in a small space with your closest friends, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm, absolutely. Um, so let's kind of go back to the the draft. For a little bit um and we kind of talked a little bit about kind of your own scouting report on yourself do you pay attention to like draft ranking scan reports or anything like that or is it just kind of like you know ignorance is bliss you just kind of play your game don't worry about it or is that something you kind of have been keeping an eye on i definitely don't go looking for it i try and just keep my head on the game uh, in the game and just bring my game every night um but if something pops up on twitter and someone tags me in something, I'll always go check it out and read whatever it is. But usually I'm just trying to keep focused on my game. Yeah, for sure. I feel like it can be kind of, there's a lot of information flying about and you can kind of get stuck in your own head about it a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm, For Um, sure. Do you have big plans for the draft? Are you you doing anything or is it just kind of you're going to sit and wait? I have some skates planned as of right now with an old coach of mine. So that will probably take my mind off it a little bit instead of uh, sitting on the couch waiting for your name to pop up. It can be a bit stressful. Um, but yeah, hopefully hopefully my name does pop up that day. And uh, when it does, I'm sure my family and I will celebrate um, that night and um, whatever else. <laughs> many, many more nights, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So obviously this is um, Locked On Blue Jackets. We we cover the Columbus Blue Jackets. Are you familiar with anyone on the team? I know that hockey is a ridiculously small world. Is there anyone that you are you know have a like a passing familiarity with on the team? Uh, Cole Sillinger. I played against him my entire life growing up <laughs> in spring hockey and whatever else. So it was it was really cool to see him playing this year as as he's an 03, right? He's my age, but uh, I obviously have a late birthday and he, and he seemed to be doing really well. So it was super cool to see someone your own age make it. Yeah. It made me feel extremely old watching when I was, when I realized he was born in 2003, I was like, Oh, okay. I don't like this anymore. But 
yeah, we we love Cole Sollinger here. We're all super, super proud of him. Um, and so, yeah, maybe some kind of uh, a little re- reunion in the uh, in the in the summer, maybe. Um, let's uh, let's finish with something kind of a little bit of uh, feel good and and kind of uh, your kind of outside of hockey interest. Um, I want to talk a little bit about hockey gives blood. How did you how did you get involved? with that so Stu middleton with hockey gives blood reached out to me and kind of was just uh asking me to if i wanted to be a part of it and i was super interested and i didn't know much about it and he told me some of the stats and some of the information about blood donations and this was during covid as well so um the donor registry was taking a huge hit and they couldn't quite get enough people in and they're still struggling to catch up and keep up with blood donors. So I thought, what better way to kind of give back? I mean, it's super simple, just going to donate blood. Some people don't like needles, but uh, I, I never had a huge issue with them. So yeah, it's, it's a super simple way for people to give back and just go and donate blood. And I thought, why not, since I'm so fortunate and some people aren't as fortunate and just need a little bit of help. So I just wanted to give give back the best way I could. Yeah, that's that's super awesome. How important is it to you to kind of be that kind of role model in the community? Obviously, everyone wants to be a role model. Um, they want to be a leader on the ice. How important is it to you to be that kind of role model off the ice? Yeah, it's super important. Uh, just being a leader and a good person is something I take pride in. Um, like just in the dressing room, even away from the rink with family, friends, no one... No one likes you if you're not being a good a good dude, right? So just being a good person off the ice is definitely something I take pride in. Yeah, definitely. It sounds super simple when you say that, doesn't it? But sometimes it's a little bit it's a little bit harder to uh to get to there. Um I think before we before we finish off, is there anything else that you kinda wanna mention that you wanna put out there? Like anything that you think that the people should know about you before we kind of finish up or uh, I'd like to say that I'm a hard worker. I'm, I always try and be the hardest worker in the room, and um, I put every I put 100% in everything I do. So um, I'm excited for this draft and to see where it takes me. And I know that no matter who takes me, I'm going to be excited. So awesome. Well, maybe uh, we'll have to have another conversation uh, in a couple of weeks' time if the if the Blue Jackets end up taking you uh but yeah thank you for uh giving up some of your uh tuesday afternoon to come and uh, come and have a chat i appreciate it no thank you for having me on and that's all i've got for you today uh tomorrow we will be bringing you another prospect interview uh, i sat down today with chase coward who plays for the red deer rebels in uh, alberta and uh, we're going to be talking all things goaltending, all things draft, all things fun. So that is coming up tomorrow on Locked on Blue Jackets. Uh, if you have comments, questions, criticism, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find this podcast at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. Thank you once again for making this your first listen of the day every day. Uh, Locked on Blue Jackets, free and available on all podcast platforms. If you haven't made the trip to YouTube yet, then I highly recommend it. Uh, You can see my handsome face with every episode. So uh, if that's something that's important to you, then YouTube is the place to be. Thank you for listening. And uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.